Yeah. Oh. Ooh, yeah. It's for basic mass transfer theory. It's the ticket ticket for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. Man, this is a ticket talking about the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. I've got like six of them. Do you have that many setups? Well, if you're hiking, there's one. If you're gonna shoot uh, oh, with long saying. lenses, you got one, right? Yeah, now you see you can uh, you can mimic that uh, pressure pro pre-infusion profile. Come, come. Mm. It's kind of nice and thick. Do a lot of your shots from with the other coffees come up this thick? Not the uh, lighter roasted ones. This comes. This is like a, you know, like a. Uh, uh, a dry process Ethiopian, you know the ones that taste like berries. Okay. Those ones come out really thick like that. This guy. Yeah, this is looking really good. Let's get ready, steady, grab yours. Huh, 40, nice. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> now we can drink, oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. WBC, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> Funniest thing I ever saw in coffee was you at uh, Atlanta at a regional barista championships, and you had already qualified to go to nationals, so you were there for some reason or other. I can't remember why. Mm -hmm. And you did this routine where you like, you took the port of your hand and you swiped it across your head, then you used it to clean the uh, <laughs> puck out. And you did like everything that would get you disqual, you know, demerit points from, and everybody was laughing. <laughs> it's true, it's true. All right, what's this one like? Well, I think it's not as bright as the other one, no, but it's smooth. Uh, I think it's quite smooth. Yeah, so this is definitely not as bright as the one I just made, mm -hmm. which I think was defective. The, the shot pulling, not okay, the roasting. This one is sweeter than that one. Yes, yes, agreed, agreed. And so the base part of this shot Tastes sweet. Well, it doesn't come, didn't come from there. How do you, do you is find that? that? Do you find that that uh, typical for that other grinder not to be sweet? I don't know. This is the mm -hmm. first time I've run them back to back, actually. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm because I've been really curious. Hmm. Well, we are seeing that you see. So that this is the Lynn Weber is taking, is retaining more of the coffee, somewhere. Oh, this Correct. one doesn't retain coffee. This one's in uh, like a, ten, a couple tenths of a gram, one way or another, or better. I thought. Oh, I thought we had this example where this one was. No, it was that one. Oh, okay, that okay. One. But they are different. Yeah, they are quite different. I like that. The best shot that I've had here today uh, out of this coffee has been from the from yes. the ones we the one we just pulled. Yeah, this was the definitely this the best is the one. best one. Huh. M's, you know, M's. So now the question is, I got one of those things. Oh, the, the pouch? Yeah. Yeah, these pouches are pretty good. Yeah, those pouches are good. I use their backpack for uh, traveling, the uh, sheep shifter. I use, oh, is that Think Tank? That's Think mm -hmm. Tank, yeah. yeah. What do I use? So, 200 to 600. Oh, nice. Then uh, traveling and hiking. This has got an awesome. Oh, nice. is is that is that just a backpack or is that no, does that so have like this is, camera stuff too? This is super secure. Oh wow! I didn't know that. I don't know. You know I wasn't even familiar with Atlas. Okay. Oh yeah. So wow. what's, yeah. So the problem with most camera backpacks is you're hiking around. If you're like doing a lot of hiking, 
you got to have a good harness. Yes. Then I put a oh. pink clip on it, and um, then all this back part. You can put all your all the accessory crap that you know filters and batteries and junk like that, and then this part is all. gear space for like uh, rain gear and all oh, that kind of wow. crap. Okay. So, you know, so you can, uh, th so this is like a day hike one and they make like a big overnight, you know, if you're like going out for a week. But because it, it's it's right on the back, the gear pockets, you, it, it's, it, it's more difficult to access, is that correct? Well, you're gonna carry one body and a lens, right? Outside uh -huh. anyway, right? Yes. If you need something, you gotta take it off your back, right? Right, right. Do you want it to lay this way or this way mm -hmm. on the ground? Six and one half a dozen okay. the other, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I got a bunch of backpacks. Uh, and, but I like the thing, I like this for a telephoto. That is nice. Do you have a, do you have a big telephoto? I have a 200 to 600. Is it Sony? That, do they make that kind of size lens? Yeah, it's a Sony. Oh, wow. Is that like a 1.8? No, this isn't that fast. It's a uh, 5.6 to 6.3. That is, and that's it's only 5.6? Wow. Yeah. That thing is massive. I'm only saying that because my, my 70 to 200 uh, USM is not that big. <laughs> is it a 2.8? It is. No, it's a. I, I, I think it's a 3.5. I have to look at it. I'm oh, all right. All right. Okay, so next thing. Okay, so this is Simonelli. Let's go over here. Ooh, and it's just been clean. Ooh. Yeah. Because I knew you were coming. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. And because I have SCASE devices to test on it. So let's see. Oh, look. So are you selling them direct or are you selling them to no. wholesalers? Um, so for years and years and years, I've sold them through Espresso Parts. Oh, right, right. And uh, I got, you know, they convinced me in the beginning to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. And, um, you know, I'm just pretty loyal, right? And I, and I don't want to do distribution. Yeah, yeah. More, more, more. more. So, yes, yeah, so when you weigh everything out, you find out which coffees are more dense and which are not. It's pretty hard to get 100 grams of coffee in that little thing. So this is not as dense as it is? No, I think because it's darker roasted, more of it went up the chimney. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah, this one had about a 16% moisture loss. And this is also pretty fresh. Like 8 o'clock last night fresh. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Let's see, what did I just do? I've done something funny that one's not right. That one's right. That one's... Ah, uh, oh, wait a minute. What have I done here? That one's fine. Is this a VST? Ah, there's my problem. Uh -huh. Ah. Which one is that? This is a VST basket that was sitting up there. Ah. Uh. Okay, but that's better. This is fine. So that uh, this will be consistent with the uh, brew basket and let's go through this and that. <laughs> These do not weigh the same, so I screw myself up all the time. So when you're testing for other people, you're doing a lot of this. Oh my god, you got to do so many of them. 
because you get a little bit of, you get differences in each one like we've been noticing right but right. you have to do enough shots so they to get average values that means you got to do a minimum of 10 mm -hmm. on any change so now is there is there a better advantage to doing it this way rather than grinding a whole bunch and then weighing it out yeah because this way it doesn't go stale after it got ground gotcha Now, just from a barista style perspective, do you notice much difference or do you have much preference as far as uh, port of filters? The style, the way they handle, the way you they oh. feel in your hand, that kind of thing? I think the Simonelli ones feel good. I like them. I like the Marsoka ones as well. Ooh, distribution king. Oh, looking good, looking Ooh. good. Let's see, WBC once again. All right, here we go. We'll just get Stephen Linton to uh, narrate. Here. Wait a minute. We're going to put Marzocco ones underneath. Oh, <laughs> shit. We're going to have a problem. What's wrong? Well, I'll just put the right. Can you switch out. the basket? I can. One. These are cute. Oh, what's the uh, the interior? I think it's some kind of hardened uh, uh, Teflon, like, you know, like a nonstick coating. Yeah. All right, here's our basket. Ooh, there we go. Good. All right, one, two. Yeah, the good part is that all these machines are pretty much tuned up together. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you can so you can pretty much you don't have to worry about the grind setting so much, or yeah. Right? All right, let's take a look at first off. That looks pretty good. Actually, yeah, look at that. No complaints there. Not at all. Woo! -hoo. Looking good. Looking good. Now let's look at this coffee puck. It looks different. Oh, very much so. Very much so, huh? Any thoughts on why that is between the two? The two I think I think because when you when you stop brewing, the water goes back the other way because it's got that three-way valve, and it's nowhere near as clean. Because of the three-way valve. Right, because it's all going back up. All right, what does this taste like? All right, let's try that. Sweet and very citrusy. Really different, isn't it? Wow, that's tremendously different. It's almost like the coffees are completely different. Yeah, it's like you showed up with three different coffees. <laughs> that's quite fascinating. Isn't that nuts? Yeah, because you know, I only experience it with really one machine. Right. Huh. What do you think? It's a good shot. If I were drinking this if I were drinking this on its own, I'd be perfectly happy with it, wouldn't I? I agree. I agree. Right? I agree You'd be that. perfectly happy with this shot. I'd be very happy. And you with this. wouldn't realize that there was this difference. Wow. Is that crazy or what? That's really impressive. And I finished it, which is kind of unusual. I finished mine. It's going to be a rough night. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> let's uh, rinse everything out good. Now, let's do one more, and this time let's do it on this one. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, yes, yeah, so there are three different shots I'm going to make. So. so you like the Akai scales? Well, I like these because they're they're rugged and um, and they're good enough. Okay. I don't know. I mean, there are other other scales around, right? But I bought two of these um, when they first came out, and I, you know. I mean, but you've worked with a lot of things like scales. I mean, is there? I like you, you say these are good enough. Okay. They're good enough. Okay. Right. So they come with a calibration way you can check them. They don't seem to change. Tenth of a gram is plenty good enough for this work. I see. Okay. So, all right, here we go. Let's put this here. Okay, this is going to be the first Lynn Weber shot on this coffee machine, actually. Ever? Ever. Oh. It is so quiet. That is so quiet. <laughs> We'll be doing this again. Now there's a little bit of spilling out at the bottom. What's ah, that about? That's because the operator doesn't know what he's doing here. Oh, look. Okay. look. We're going to put this in the draft. Sorry about Oh, this. it's a little bit off on the... Uh, yeah, oh, look. Oh, see, okay, okay. it's kind of cool their workflow scheme, but it's a little fussy. I see. Like. It's designed to be a uh, commercial thing, and I think if you if you use it 500 times, you're like really good at it. But I've learned that there is a way you can spill it all out on the floor. Okay. I've done. Um, I've also done the EK thing where you forget to put the cup under it and turn the grinder on and you spray it all over the room. Oh yes, yes, of course, of course. Yes, of course. You have to do all of these things in order to be a seasoned amateur. Well, you spilled half of your hopper on the floor. Oh my God. <laughs> Oops. Or burn yourself. That's that's the that's the one that gets me the most now. Years into it. Oh. So. Um, okay. Here we go. Well, I noticed that this grinder, when you put the coffee in, the, the RPM drops and then comes out. Is there, is there any kind of concern about that or does that matter? I mean, does that have any impact on the quality of the grind? Uh, I'm told that uh, there is some RPM sensitivity and I don't know the answer to how. I have not had it long enough to experiment with it. Okay. Yeah, see that's in the middle. Let's put the lid on it. The safety lid. And that's just prevented from spilling out? Is that it? Or it holds down the... Uh, the yeah, it holds down that little valve so you can't screw up. Here, let's get these all yes. ready to go. Here, I'll do mine. Do yours. Let's get this guy out. Ooh. Clean off. Well, you know, based on your floor, you are certainly a much more clean barista than I am. Well, that's because I mopped it this morning. <laughs> well, I mean, you, but after you haven't dropped anything. Oh, well. This is why I don't make coffee at home. See, the thing is, I don't run a coffee shop, right? <laughs> if I ran a coffee shop, it'd be different, right? Yeah, it'd be all over the place and messy and crazy. Yeah, and see all the machines are all clean and gorgeous, right? Yes, yes, yes. Did you notice that? Yeah, at the end of the day, everybody's just leaving. In the coffee shop, that is. Right. Ooh. Oh. There it is. Put that in there. Yes, there's a bunch of people trying to rip off the OCD guy. Is it really a rip off, do you think? Uh, I don't know. Does he have it patented? I don't think so. I don't know. Whatever. I kind of uh, I kind of like buying from the original, you know, because it was like the you know the guy figured it out, and I know what it feels like when people try to rip you off. Oh, for sure. Have you had people try to rip off this case? Yep. Fortunately, they haven't been successful. 
All right, there's that. Here's you, and here's me. With one tenth of a gram of water sitting on the scales, and off we go. Let's see what we get this time. Came out there nice. Mm -hmm. so it looks like it's going a little quicker, doesn't it? Slightly. Actually, it's 32 seconds. It's identical. <laughs> And we, did we reach that full 40 or, or 42? Uh, yeah. So a little bit more, is that right? This well, I think we were like 41-ish before, yeah. so I'm not going to worry about one gram. So How does it look? Yeah. What does that look like? First off, we have brand non-consistency here. <laughs> To me, a little bit more orange. Yeah, yeah, citrusy. Uh, yeah, yeah, wow. But it's actually, it's sweet, mm -hmm. but the bottom end is gone. Yes, yes, I agree, I agree. Again, but still quite pleasant. Yeah. A little, actually, right now, it's a little bit more, for me, puckering here. I'm about halfway through my shot. But the creme is nice, the color is nice. Yeah. I would be very happy with this in it. You would be happy if, with that coffee. But if I walked into your coffee shop and you gave this to me, I'd be very happy with it. But it's different. Mm. Tremendously different. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you could pick that out without anybody telling you. Wow. Which one do you like better? I don't know. You know, I like the smoothness of the previous shot. But I do really like the that sweeter orange character of this one. Yeah, isn't that? Uh, it personally it's like speaking. a really different coffee. Yeah. What about you? What do you think is which do you prefer between hey, the, the two? One, I'll tell you the shot that I thought was the best shot we had today, EK forty three and that. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was a really good shot. Absolutely. Huh. Huh. So what kind of conclusions can we pull from this? Well, are there, well you can, are there, here are the, <laughs> right, all right, the conclusions you can pull from it. We don't have a laser particle size analyzer. Okay. But we have two different grinders, right? I bet you there is a difference in particle size distribution and the guys from Lynn Weber. So I asked a question. They make a couple of different grinder burrs, sets. And one was supposed to produce this more unimodal distribution. In other words, no fines. It was supposed to all be, oh. uh, or minimum fines. And I was going, can I get one of those? I'd like to try to make espresso out of it. And they said, no, because in order to pull that off, the way the uh, burrs were cut wouldn't enable you to grind fine enough to make espresso. Hmm. And I said, okay, fair enough. So, and they said they didn't really like the EK-43 style of espresso. They like their style of espresso made with the burrs here. And I'm going, okay, that's, fi that's fair enough as well. Mm -hmm. But what I sure wish I had access to was a laser particle size analyzer because I'd measure the difference between these two because the the science tells you particle size distributions matter okay right right and here is evidence that there's some difference that's grinder specific because you can pull them on the same machine and they're different they're very different they're very different but is it how much of a difference well how much do you have to account for the difference in burr life between the two between the two grinders like 
This is a the the this Weber one is is it's brand, brand new, new brand so new, it's so. a new birth set, so it's got new birth set itis. Right. And right, so it's a snapshot in time in the lifetime of this birth set, right? And it's going to produce a certain taste profile that I bet if you could, if you could capture this in history and mm -hmm. reproduce it two years down the road. You'd see, right? Mm. The only way you can do that is with the particle size analyzer, right? Right, right. Then you could tell. Now, who does that kind of thing? Mal particle Koenig. Size. I mean, but they have to send that to a lab. Is that it? Is Mal, that Mal Koenig's got their own. Oh, okay. But you can buy them now for well, I can't afford one. They're like seventy thousand bucks. Oh. <laughs> right. There's a limit to lab gear that I'm going to buy. <laughs> yeah, that. But that's something you can send to a lab, the samples, is that right? Or Yeah, so you can do that. But will that, okay, so like let's say you ground samples from both grinders, send it to a lab for analysis. How much would the aging of that coffee after being ground? I don't know the answer to that. Oh, but I would that like have an to. effect, do you think? Uh, or would you have to bring the grinders to the lab? And no, I think, I think you could probably pull it off. Oh, okay. I think you could do it. A few SCA conferences ago, um, you know Barry, right? Barry Jarrett. Yeah. Absolutely. He and I took samples of coffee ground from different grinders, you know, specifically different. Rober, K30, uh, EK43, whatever. So we get samples of coffee ground on these different grinders and we took them to the, there was a company with a laser analyzer there. Oh, at the show? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know about that. Okay. Yeah, so we just went and collected samples from all these machines, and then we went <laughs> over there and ran them through them, and we had them log them and print them out. And I've got them somewhere on the computer. But yeah, you can see all the, you can see each of those machines has a different signature. Huh. So, but do you want the low particulate settings, but then you want it to be more narrow like the K30? So I... Or wider like the Rover? My... My opinion is that the fines are likely to over extract. Right. And so if you're if what you're tasting in your coffee is due to that, then it'd be good to do to get rid of it. And I think people have done experiments where they've made they've sieved ground coffee and made express made espresso with the big parts. So far, so wait a minute, what have we not done here? We've made this and that, mm -hmm. that and that, mm -hmm. that and that, that and that. We've gotten four different coffees. Completely different coffees. Completely different coffees. But we did not, how about we do one more round on this, on the lever, because we did the levers separate cups. Right. So we didn't and, taste Oh, except the one time. So the last time we this did this one on that, and we make them together. Yes, let's try that. All right, let's do that. Especially since we want to see more leather action. Yeah, and boy, does that. Oh, so here's the other thing. This puck's been in here for how long? Half an hour, anyway. Right. Go look underneath there. Is it clean? Yeah, more or less. Well, we'll check this out. Oh, that, that, ran, that ran clean. That runs clean. Isn't that fucking crazy? Wow. Look, I've used bad language on the video. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. But let's keep that. So now this is your machine to keep. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I know. I can't believe this. Kent loves you. Apparently. I mean, I got to try, I got to play with one, a three group in Riyadh. There's a company called a Varietal. That has this one of these in their cafes. Yeah, I mean it's a complicated machine. There's a lot of parts to it. Yeah. How difficult to service is it? Well, so far I've been in it a little bit, um, and it's really convenient to get around. Oh, okay. So um, yeah, so this comes off easily enough. Mm -hmm. The water tray comes out really easily, and the electronics box just slides right on out. You undo a, a lock screw on the side and the whole thing is in a tray and it just slides right out and it's right in front of you. It's really convenient. Oh. Is it a sealed tray? Like, is it, is yeah. there ever, is there ever trouble like having the, 
electrons it underneath a, the, the it, it has a cover on it to protect it. Uh, I think it's reasonably well sealed. And then let's see. I mean, these remove and that back panel removes. I mean, obviously, if I needed to get in there, I'd have to pull the machine out of here, but it's not bad. Hmm. I think a GS3 is a hard machine to get around. That it is, that it is. But this this seems good so far for the things I had, I've had to do so far, which has just been um, adjusting it. And then um, I had to fix a connector to the level sensor there. Okay. That was... Uh, Okay, so we are making one of those for this, and we're going to pull this guy out. And then, so I I can't decide if that here's the light, better light oh. is because the water goes back up through the three-way valve or not. But it sure looks different. Does, is that consistently what you see in the, the, the yep. Aurelia? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to run this, and we're going to run it over at the lever machine now. Here we go. some of the ones that been getting stuck is that right yeah i think so it's a, the hazard of roasting darker bye bye so do you prefer brighter espressos yourself uh well so the jurgen there is pretty bright um but i have a dry process brazil i was going to make you that's like real low acid and oh yes it's kind of a medium roasted. I mean, it's not roasted this dark, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's real low acidity. All right, so we are now looking for this guy, which we have, and we will clean up. Accessory something they sell on their separately. Yeah. Good. All right, now we need this. And there are cuts. One, two, tear. Let's give this a little. And there. This right here, off we go. Now you can watch the uh, pre-infusion. Two, three, and we'll see if we can replicate a little late, but not bad. Ooh, here we go. Looks a little tight, actually, doesn't it? Oh, there we go. the uh, replicated oh, that yeah. pretty close so this is going to be actually a little bit on the short
short side. Ooh. Wonder if we'll have to fix that. We might have to pull two different ones. You think that's too short? 37? 37? Yeah. Take them out and try them. Yeah, might as well try. Yeah. Grab it out. Ready, steady, go. Boop. It's quite different, you're right. That's super different. Way less acidity. Mm. Bottom end came back. Almost like a cocoa, cacao yeah. kind of flavor to it's it. Like dark chocolate. Mm. Wow. Completely different experience now. So if you're a machine developer, this will drive you nuts. <laughs> So you'd, you'd brew this coffee on that machine and you'd say that there was acidity involved then you'd go over here and you'd say there was none. Yeah, yeah, like it's almost caramelish. Yeah. So it's at the very bottom now that I'm, I'm pretty much done. Right now that I'm getting at the bottom, it's that's right. Very syrupy. And it's sweet. Wow. How about that? That's freaky, that's freaky. And now that I'm down at the bottom, it is real syrupy and sweet. Yeah. How about that? You drank a whole one again. I drank a whole one. Oh my god. I don't do that at cafes. Like, I don't know, if you remember the, on this past shot, there was that, it was nice dark crema, pretty reddish brown, but there was that one point that was really kind of light, that one little circle. Oh, in these? Yeah, from the stream. Right, because we left it sitting in there while it's going drip, 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 drip. Right, but what I'm wondering, like, so, like, how we, how I train our baristas is that we stop the shot once that blonding begins. I okay. wonder if that, how that would apply All right. on these machines. Well, let's do that. Okay, and then we're going to brew the another shot, but this time we'll use a whole lot more volume and we'll just pull it out. How much volume have, where have you been taking it to? I've only been using what one, two, third one. Oh. Third one. So we could go up here. Oh, I thought. Okay, okay. Okay, and then we'll and then we'll pull it out, and it'll make a mess on the tray. Okay, very good. Okay, and we'll see what that's like. The possibilities are endless. Put this back in here for the moment. Did you say you're sourcing your coffees from Sweet Maria's? Is that right? Yeah, because okay. I'm lazy and they do a good job. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do a great job. Thompson is quite an interesting cat. Man, it's quite a lifestyle, and I wonder how you do it now. The traveling part, you mean? Yeah. How do you go to Origin now? You don't. So how do you buy? Well, I think, well, it's just kind of like, you know... You've got... It's, you don't relationships and I, don't, I think it's a question you don't get the serendipitous discoveries like you do when you go there right but you know if you have relationships with your farmers you know they'll send you the samples of whatever you'd like to have or whatever they're doing that's interesting and you can choose from there but yeah you don't get the uh, like a lot of times when I've gone to origin maybe there's something sitting like one coffee we found sitting on the patio as it was starting to dry, I was like, oh, this is what we're going to get. Okay. So. I bet those strips are really interesting. Yeah, they're quite good. They're quite good. Have you not been to Origin yet? I never have. It's oh. a part, it, yeah, it's a part of coffee I'd really like to do. Mm -hmm. Kind of a big coffee's a really big world. Oh yes, I agree. Okay, twenty point one, so we're a little oh, good. Okay, so we're good enough. Let's go. Let's see. Okay, so I put twenty point three in and we've lost 
two tenths in the chute. But I'm not going to worry too much about that. Now, why am I grabbing the door? Because uh, I'm worried about earthquakes. No idea. We get a lot of those here in Maryland. Yeah. Time to be uber neat. Right, coffee, coffee lab versus coffee shop. So our plan right now is we're going to use a different notch that will run more volume through and then we'll just pull them when they go blonde. Which, you tell me when to pull them and we'll yank them. Sounds good. Okay. So let's get it off. Let's get this a little... Start way up here. Okay, the pressure's higher now. Oh yeah, 10, 12, 12. Oh, so more volume. That's right, well, you said more volume equals more pressure. Right, because the spring gets compressed further. This is pretty yummy. Okay, and I'll just pull this whole thing out when we get to that point. Right there. Right there? Yep. Okay, so those are really short. Yeah, but what I was basing on is once it started to waver. Yeah, you want to pull it. That's when I pulled okay. it. Okay, that's when you pull them. Yeah. Alright. Here you go. Oh, thank Ooh, you. That looks pretty delightful. Well, yours is nice and dark, too. Look yeah, that. look at that. So these are sort of the traditional ristretto kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could. Yeah. We can. We actually drive, run them a l at the shop. We actually run them a little bit uh, longer in that you know we'll, we'll coarsen the grind slightly more to get that more volume, while still maintaining the same kind of crema. But, and we usually do about twenty-one grams as okay. well. Okay. So very similar to what you're experiencing here. Okay, this is sweeter. Oh yeah, definitely sweeter. My, my first sip though was a little bit more bright than the last one. Yeah, but the next one is... Yeah, the second one is definitely sweeter. As we're going down into the cup, it's getting sweeter. Yeah. Almost like a brown sugar at the very end. You drank the whole thing? I did. Again? Oh my god. <laughs> I can't keep up with you. <laughs> so I'll show you what I... Yes, I've yes, I would love to see yours. See you. Yeah, so this is going to be amateur roasting versus... Oh, no, whatever. It's all the same. Professional. All right. So you roast a kilo at a time? Yeah, but I... I you know, once by the time you warm up the roaster, you know, for me, like I never worked at a roastery either, so there's like a rhythm to roasting. Well, if you have a lot to roast, yes. So like, you warm it up. I warm it up, then I cool it off to a certain point, and I dump, you know, the beans in. Then you go through the process, and it goes in the drip tray, in the cooling tray, right? Mine. I have airflow either through the drum or through the cooling tray, right? Yes, right, right. Mine is similar to that, yes. So then how I manage the temperature of the drum in the time that it's cooling off after I dump the load out depends on how, you know, which way I have the airflow going, whether I have the vent, you know, the, the you know, hopper door open or the or the other, you know, the dump right, right. exit door open. And so all that, you know, so there's a certain way I do that and then so that I'm ready to put the next load in and not scorch the beans. 
Yes, yes. So, and then I'm like, and then there's like a workflow that you, that I maintain, and I don't like to be disturbed. Mm -hmm. Right? So, mm -hmm. if I've got it up and running, I'll do a month's coffee and freeze it. Oh, nice, nice, okay. Right, and then I have, so then I have different things, and then, because I don't know what I'm doing, you know, blending is always an accident. Now, why do you freeze? Like, why, so... What I mean by that, you know, there's a lot of people in the, in the, out there that'll be like, oh, you should never freeze coffee. Um, well, they're not chemists. Let's yeah, a lot that. of people say that the coffee is best when it's not frozen. It's supposed to be out for a certain period of time, and then you're supposed to use it. And then Barry and Jarrett will say, all the flavors are there, you know, when as soon as you roast it, you know, and then whatever it is, days later is what it is, days later, and so, you know, you might, I think his preference is for out of the roaster, and mm -hmm. freezing. Oh, so once he drops it, he puts it in the freezer, yeah. right, essentially. Yeah. Okay. And my, me, for me, I'm going, okay, it's going to take me 20 minutes to get the roaster warmed up, half an hour to get it warmed up and ready to go, and then I've got to get all my data logging shit ready to go. Cause, and I roast completely manually, but I log the temperature. Okay. So, by the time I've done all that, if I, you know, it's like a big effort. If I roast, I don't want coffee lying around for a month, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll just freeze it, and it, maybe it's not quite as good as it was at the particular hour and phase of the moon that somebody might think it was best, but okay. it'll be damn close to it. But when you said, but you said earlier the, that they're not chemists, so, so what is the chemistry, so the chemistry reason for this? Like why, how so, do we debunk so the these chemi people? The chemistry thing is that chemical reactions, staling reactions are, de are temperature dependent and they are also exponential functions of temperature just like diffusivity. So the way to slow down staling is to reduce the temperature. So freeze it. And it won't stale. And how long? Is it an indefinite kind of thing? So Illy did this work a long time ago. Actually it's not new. It's been known. It's just people don't ad adopt it. Is that more because, do you think... So Once. You can, uh, so impure... Um, so people on Home Barista did this experiment where they um, uh, stored coffee for s in the freezer for six months and then they uh, roasted the same coffee and then tried to discern independent, you know, blind tasting, couldn't tell. And I think that our argument's been made before and tested before, and there are problems with it because the coffee that's green has been sitting around, right? You right. Know? So what happens? Did I guess you got to freeze, or you got to freeze the green coffee and seal it as well, or whatever you need to do. But from a from a chemical reaction standpoint, certainly if you want to eliminate staling reactions, reduce the temperature. Okay. Okay. Good. And Barry used to so Barry when he sold his coffee when he had Riley's coffee. Right. His uh, places that he he his places that he sold it to he wanted them to freeze the coffee. He didn't want it sitting out. And that was purely from a having product go bad standpoint. Okay. Well, I just wonder like is a lot of the the, the, people, the, the a lot of this talk that people are like oh you shouldn't freeze still today. Because it's more marketing, they just want you to buy more coffee, or? I think so. I think freezing really does work. Yeah. And I think if you had the opportunity to every day go to a roaster and get that day's coffee and bring it home and brew it, maybe freezing wouldn't be the best choice, but I don't have that option. You know, when I buy coffee, if I buy coffees from people and I, you know, and I sort of buy them to compare how I'm doing or because they have something interesting, right? Or I'm lazy and I didn't feel like roasting. 
so I buy it and I use it, but then I have to store it somehow, and you know, you can't store it all that long. No, no. So why do you think people like ignore this? If Illy did all this work years ago, why do you think people ignore that? Uh, Any thoughts on that? Or? I don't know. I think there's a lot of tradition in coffee. Oh, um, back to that again. Back to that again, yeah. All right. So I'm the dry process Brazil, Agtron color tile. Yeah. Here we go. And this time it's going to the EK. Static charge is always a problem.